we've got a function and an inequality. How are we going to do it? Using some clever manipulation. Today, we're solving 2022 anti-10b number 24. Consider all functions that satisfy the absolute value of f of x minus f of y equals or is less than or equal to one half the absolute value of x minus y. For all real numbers x and y. Okay, so we've got this equation. It looks scary, but we'll break it down. And of all such functions, we're also given that this equation is true. f of 300 is f of 900. What is the greatest possible value of f of f of 800 minus f of f of 400? That is a lot. Okay, so we've got this condition here. So we have to try to use it somehow, right? Let's see if we can use it over here. So, oh, looks like here we have f of f of 800, right, M minus f of f of 400. That's the expression we're trying to find. So what we can say is that let this part be x and this part be y. So we're given that the absolute value of this quantity is less than or equal to one half x minus y. And that's one half f of 800 minus f of 400. Okay. Of all such functions that also satisfy the equation f of 300 equals f of 900. So now we've got this condition here. Okay, first of all, we've got this, right? And maybe, aha, we can see that we've got another f of x minus f of y. So we can plug it in again. So then if we do that, we get it's less than or equal to half times half times, right? There's a half from earlier and then there's a half from earlier and then the inside part right here, the inside part will be one half times the absolute value f of or 800 minus 400. Okay, so what should we make of this? Well, we can see that this part is just 400, so it's less than or equal to 100. So if the absolute value must less than or equal must be less than or equal to 100, then our, is our answer just 100? Well, actually not, because we also have this condition. f of 300 equals f of 900. So whatever this function that satisfies this may not necessarily satisfy this. So how do we somehow use this condition? That's what we're going to try to do. But a key thing to notice here is that what are the values of f that we're really looking at in this problem? We've got f of 800, of course, f of 400, of course, f of 300, and f of 900. Or, yeah, as you can see there. So we've essentially got four f values, and let's try to relate them somehow. Hmm. Oh, but we know that f of 300 and f of 400 are going to be pretty close, right? Because of this condition. Well, that condition tells us is that f of 400 minus f of 300, the absolute value of, of that is less than or equal to 1 half times x minus y, 100, which is 50. So that means we know that these two don't, cannot differ by more than 50 the absolute value of their difference is less than or equal to 50. Okay. Oh, we can do something similar for 900 and 800. Let's do that. We also have f of 900 minus 800 
that's also going to be less than or equal to 900 minus 800, 100. One half times absolute value, 100. Again, 50. Oh, so maybe, as you can see here, both f of 400 and 300 are less than or equal to 50 apart, and 900 and 800 also less than or equal to 50 apart, at most 50 apart. So based on that, what would be the largest, oh, but we also know these are equal. So what would be the largest value of, of an expression like this based on that? So the key thing here is that f of 800 can be f of 900 plus 50 can be, let's just look here. Over here, we add the differences less than or equal to 50. So f of 800 can range from anything f of 900 plus 50 all the way, it can be anything inside here, f of 900 minus 50, right? Because this thing is, a, or sorry, f of 900 minus 50 on the outside. Because remember, this thing is the absolute value. Okay. And then we also have that f of 400 equals f of 300 plus 50 to minus 50. And again, it can be anything in this range. We don't know what it is. It does not necessarily have to be an integer. It's just something in this range. So based on that hypo based on those conclusions that we made, what is the largest possible value of f of 800 minus f of 400? We want the biggest possible value. So let's make f of 800 big as big as possible. So at most, f of 800 can be f of 900 plus 50. So at most, this expression will be f of 900 plus 50 minus, and we want to minimize f of 400 because we're subtracting it. So at the smallest, f of 400 can be f of 300 minus 50. Right? And then we take half the absolute value of this. Oh, but we know these two quantities, f of 300 and 900, are equal as given by the problem statement. So then this is just equal to half of these quantities are equal and 50 minus, okay, this is 50 on, on over here, then it's minus minus 50, so plus an additional 50. So f of 900 minus f of 300 is zero. So that's just half of zero plus 100. Make that bigger, right? Because f of negative 50, negative plus 50, that's 100. And this is 50, right? Also, now we have another bound, it seems like. Well, now we know that it's less than or equal to 50. It has to be less than or equal to 50, right? Because we know that this quantity can be at most, uh, this quantity can be at most 50, so it has to be less than or equal to that 50, f of this quantity right there. So then is 50 our answer? Well, but then it begs the question, what if there's something else? What if there's something else? What if this doesn't work? What if there's no actual value that gives us maximum? And actually it turns out that 50 is our answer. But why is there no other maximum value? Well, the actual formal proof for this is very complicated, but essentially the reason why this is true is because in the problem, we've, we've, there's no inf other information. We've just used this condition several times, right? And then this condition we already used. So essentially we've already deduced that because we've already used this condition and this condition, there aren't really any other conditions for us to use to give us an even stricter bound. Now, this is not an actual proof, but it's a good way to reasoning and understand why this is true, right? Because this condition, we used it many times. So then everything, if we just had this condition, then our maximum would actually be 100. But then we've got this condition. And once we use that, we got our maximum down to 50. And we can see that there's really no other lower, there's no other condition, so then that has to be our greatest value. Let's summarize. So first we broke down this expression using this condition and then we did a little bit of minute we did 
we found this was true and this was true. So after our original bound was less than or equal to 100, but then we saw these quantities here. So then we see that, well, that bound is not not very strict, meaning that there could be th this number itself doesn't work. And we found that by substituting f of 300 and 400 and f of 800 in terms of 900, we got that it's less than or equal to 50. And that gives us our bound. Thanks for watching.